Now in this section, let's uh, go and explore different features offered by user pool. In uh, later sections, we will see how we can integrate user pool uh, with our application. So I'm inside Cognito dashboard and I uh, have selected user pool. Here we can see user pools are directories of federated and local user profiles. Here federated user refer to the user uh, which are signed in through third party providers like uh, Facebook or Google. And local user profiles are referring to the users which are created inside the uh, user pool of Cognito. And uh, they provide authentication options for users. So something we have already discussed. Now I will go ahead and click on this create user pool button and uh, here it's asking us to select application type for now i will select uh, single page application depending on which application type select it will create that kind of uh, client for us and uh, another thing uh, we will come to these options uh, later and uh, understand significance uh, for now let's keep single page application and under sign in option i will select email uh, required for sign in and uh, attributes for sign up i will select uh, let's select email and uh, uh, maybe select name also and uh, return url uh, this is something uh, uh, related to oauth2 protocol so for now i will just enter localhost 3000 we will see its significance also at later stages I will hit create button and here it's showing me uh, instruction to integrate the user pool with uh, my application with my single page application uh, means react or angular or javascript application but uh, since we are not interested in integration right now we want to explore user pool settings so I will just go to overview section and here we have uh, user pool details. Uh, so here we can see we have this user pool got created and since it's just some random name let's rename it to my first user pool and uh, it got renamed another important things to have a look is user pool id and uh, this is the url which is used to, uh, to verify the tokens you should wear uh, user pool at uh, time of login. Since at time of creation of user pool, we selected application type as single page application. That's why here it created one uh, client for our app, um, for our user pool. And this client is public client because we selected a single page application. If we have selected traditional app or uh, uh, machine to machine uh, app, then uh, yeah, here it would have created private client and uh, each app each user pool can have one or more than that clients and uh, functionality of these clients is to interact with user pool so uh, we, we, in, we use these clients to interact with the user pool so if i go inside client details i can see client name and client id and this is a uh, something which we will use uh, inside our application to interact with this user pool this client id and uh, here we have quick setup guide which we will ignore for now uh, here under login pages we can see a url for uh, cognito managed login ui and uh, it is the newer version of something called cognito hosted ui so uh, earlier cognito used to offer Cognito hosted UI for authentication uh, and creation of uh, user. Now they have revamped it and created this managed login UI. And uh, we can see settings here. Uh, these are OAuth specific settings. So let's uh, not touch them for now. I will click on view login page. And this is the login page. Uh, where we can log in if user is created but if I come back here and the user management I can see that I do not have any user so I can't uh, log in uh, first let's go and create one user I will uh, copy my email paste it here under name since we configured to ask for name during sign up it's asking under password let's enter something secure
we will just click on sign up and save so now after uh, clicking on save it took me here to confirm account page and uh, it will send me verification otp on the mail which i provided and here i got otp and uh, uh, the format of this OTP is also configurable. So if I go here under uh, message templates and the verification messages, I can configure email. And even if I want link, that also I can configure. So instead of sending OTP like this, uh, you might have seen some websites uh, send link, which we, which we can click and uh, account will be verified. So that option also we can do. But for now, let's continue with this feature only. I will copy paste. Uh, code here and it successfully logged me in uh, here it's uh, giving me authorization code and uh, uh, it's following what to protocol that's why it redirected me here with uh, this code later i can use this code to receive necessary tokens uh, uh, when we integrate with application but for now let's uh, go back to cognito settings and uh, go back to users if i click on this refresh here we have new user now and uh, i will go to details of user here this is the user id it's also called sub and uh, uh, this detail will also appear inside the tokens uh, which we will receive uh, after the login and uh, here we can see account is confirmed means uh, email is configured uh, email is uh, confirmed and uh, here we can see emfa multi-factor authentication is inactive and uh, this user is currently not member of any group so another important feature of uh, user pool is uh, groups groups as name suggests it can be used to uh, group uh, several users into uh, a group so we can have admin group uh, moderator group those kind of groups so here i will go and create admin group with default settings here we have group if i go back to user and uh, now i can add my user to admin group and here it's part of admin group here we are doing this in the ui but uh, uh, in actual application uh, these things we do through api calls or through sdk uh, now since my user is part of this admin group and this detail will be, pre will be present in uh, the tokens which are issued by Cognito and uh, based on that uh, those details we can decide uh, what kind of privilege we want uh, for this user. So now let's explore some other options. Here uh, if I want the email, so uh, whatever email which we received, this verification code, uh, since we are using Cognito, uh, we can have maximum 50 such emails in one day. As our application is scale up and we get more users, we need to use uh, something called SES, uh, simple email service. Uh, but uh, for now, let's keep it default. And uh, we can specify password policy, uh, how many minimum character we want. Uh, what uh, difficulty we want and uh, this is pass key specific configuration so this option is available under sign in and uh, under sign in we have uh, option for uh, choice with sign in uh, and here if i edit uh, i can i have this type of uh, option available so i can uh, get uh, so instead of entering password i can get uh, magic link you might have used that feature uh, magic link uh, where uh, i entered email in the login page and instead of in inserting password i will receive uh, otp in my email and that otp will be sufficient to log me in uh, and uh, another option which we can configure is sms otp uh, also we can configure pass keys so let's try uh, let's try uh, to login with email OTP. I will go back to client uh, login page and login view login page. I will sign in and uh, let's click next. Here it directly sent me uh, this login uh, link, login uh, OTP. So here it says your authentication code is this. 
I can enter authentication code, uh, but if I want, I can try another way and I have two options available now. One is password and one is email one time password. So let's see if it will work. It's not working. It will send me new OTP now. Here. Because I navigated one step back. That's why it sent me again. And uh, it logged me in successfully we got the code here one important thing is that uh, since this user is created and after that we configured passkey that's why it's not available for us but since we have enabled passkey here now and uh, now if i create some new user then passkey option will be available for that so let's go ahead and uh, create it so i will go again to App client, login pages, view login, or instead of creating new user, I will just let's uh, delete this user and uh, disable user access, delete user. Now let's recreate same user. Password is entered. Let's sign up. Again, it will send me OTP. So here, yeah, after successful uh, sign up, it's asking me to add passkey and uh, I can add passkey and use it from next time. So these, uh, we saw these options which are part of passwordless sign-in and uh, we have multi-factor authentication also so let's see this also i will select authentic authenticator apps as emfa fail to update emfa source error only password can be enabled as multi-factor authentication if emfa is required Okay, let's uh, see this option. It worked. I remember this option used to work. Okay, um, so since I under sign in, I have enabled uh, email OTP. That's why it's not allowing me. So I will disable email and then with password, I can enable. Probably I have to disable passkey also. Now, if I try to make MFA as requirement, yeah, it's working. Now, let's repeat steps again. I will go to login page. I will try to log in. I will enter this. Password is entered. And here, after logging, it's asking me to uh, set up MFA for me so I can use either Microsoft or Google, Google Authenticator app to set up MFA for my user. So these were the sign in settings which we can configure sign up settings. Uh, here we can adjust uh, attributes. Uh, another important option which I wanted to show is the social and external providers. So uh, we can configure these options and we will configure in upcoming section but for now let's just see we can configure facebook google amazon uh, we will see how to configure google uh, at later stages leave another important option is extensions and uh, this extension is uh, useful to interrupt the flow of uh, uh cognito so for example uh, some user is signing up they are creating their account and uh, we want to uh, disallow or not allow certain kind of uh, uh, emails like uh, we do not want to allow uh, hello at direct example.com we want to allow only at direct gmail.com so what we can do we can set up pre-trigger lambda function uh, so uh, before sign up uh, we can uh, set up pre-sign up lambda trigger uh, so before sign up uh, uh, this uh, uh, lambda will be triggered and it will check email uh, whatever email we have entered and if that email is not in the desired format we can give the error and uh, user have to enter new email similarly we can also send uh, 
welcome message to either a user after a successful sign up so these are the lambda functions available and uh, these are the points available uh, where we can attach our lambda function as uh, extension so yeah these are the options available which we can explore and uh, the last thing not the last but yeah domain uh, we can also attach our own domain by default it's uh, a cognito domain um, this is used uh, uh, for uh, login purpose so if we see our login ui it's uh, something like this if we want to have our own domain name here we can set up that also and uh, message templates we already saw under managed login uh, managed login style we can uh, change the style of uh, the ui which we are seeing so like uh, we can use these settings to change uh, that's uh, how this screen appear here we can change this background and uh, text uh, and uh, these colors and all that so uh, this was the complete overview of uh, user pool now we will see how we can uh, integrate user pool with uh, our applications so to integrate with our application there are two ways to do one is the OAuth way and another is a SDK way. So we will start with OAuth way in the next section. After that, we will see how to do using SDK.